Thank you to my newest patrons, Tristan and Lucen Dossier. I appreciate your support, and as always, you can reach me with any questions or concerns via Patreon PM, Minds.com, or Twitter at Helping Hand for Me. Every dollar helps, every dollar is appreciated, and every pledge of $10 or more will earn you a permanent spot in my video credits. To all others who would care to support me in a different way, the second edition of my horror fiction anthology, Pleasant Nightmares, is now available on Amazon via Kindle and in paperback. Link in the description. So, not long ago, I received criticism from a few people in the comments section of my video addressing Marvel's diversity propaganda, taking issue with the fact that I seem to be in agreement with their use of the term people of color. The reality is that I hadn't given much thought to it at the time. But after seeing the new LGBT flag and its bigoted black and brown stripes floating around the internet, I'm inclined to agree with those objectors. People of color most certainly is a term that needs to be done away with, because it is a perfect example of an abstract concept that has no actual basis in reality and is only used to segregate and incite hatred. Anyone who has taken a class in color theory can tell you just how absurd this term really is. If we're talking about the subtractive spectrum, which we obviously are since there's no such thing as black or brown light, it's true that white is the absence of all color in the sense that no color of light is absorbed by the surface of a white object, and all colors of light are reflected. But in that same capacity, black is also not a color. It is the presence of a property that absorbs all colors of light into a surface and reflects no color. That we can even see black objects or white objects at all based on the light they reflect is not due to their color, but due to the sheen and fresnel of their surfaces according to their texture. When white is added to a color, it lightens that color and is called a tint. When black is added to a color, it darkens that color and is called a shade. And when both are added, effectively adding gray, it reduces the saturation of a color and is called a tone. But what about brown? Well, brown isn't a color either. Brown is what's known as a broken hue, and it's a trick of the eye. It's what happens when the primary colors are disproportionately mixed in the subtractive spectrum and return a mixture of light for which the human eye cannot interpret a middle ground. It's essentially a natural error message returned by our nervous system. In this way, brown is akin to yellow, in that it only exists to the eye as an error message that failed to return a logical mixture of red and green light. And we only really call it a color because that mixture happens in the light spectrum before it makes contact with a surface. But you will never see brown light. The only way the term people of color would be logically accurate would be in referring to the old, currently socially unacceptable monikers of yellow Asians and red Native Americans. But the reality is that there are no legitimately yellow or red people, apart from those either afflicted with jaundice or scorched with sunburn. And interestingly, those colors appear most brilliantly in white people because the diminished level of brown in their skin does not interfere with the reflection of those colors from its surface. So the next time you see a white person suffering from kidney failure who spent a little too much time in direct sunlight, you can congratulate him on being a person of color. And that is precisely the kind of ridicule that term deserves. Because at the end of the day, all it boils down to is pride in one's melanin content, a chemical that adds a level of brown to the skin and diffuses light across its surface, the natural purpose of which was to reduce sun damage. The less melanin is present in the skin, the more the skin will have a sort of patchy, inconsistent, pinkish hue influenced by the density of blood vessels beneath it, a hue that we have since come to call flesh. And of course, SJWs lost their shit over this term because they seem to think that it means white skin is somehow the default skin color, when the reality is that this color is how all skin flesh looks in the absence of melanin, as seen in the medical condition known as vitiligo. Look at these pictures and let this fact sink in. Beneath that thin, trivial layer of a chemical light diffuser, and beyond slight morphological differences acquired from generations of geological isolation, we are all the same. When SJWs use the term people of color, it is nothing more than a reference to the dated term colored people, which was used to distinguish whites from blacks in one of the worst periods of racial tension in the Western world's recent history. When they use this term, they are not referring to people whose skin has color, because as I just demonstrated, that would be inaccurate. They're not even simply referring to people who are not white, because the isolation of white people from this label is not arbitrary and is contingent upon their victim narrative. When they say people of color, they literally mean people who are oppressed by white people because they are not white. This is nothing more than another clandestine effort to subliminally promote the hatred of a single race of people, because the reality is that there are no white people. There are no black people. There are only slight morphological differences rooted in genetic variations that were selected for by the conditions of our ancestral environments. And none of them are superior or inferior except according to our biased and flawed standards. If the tribes of Africa had been white 15,000 years ago, they would have died out from the trauma caused by sun damage. Their skin would have quickly wrinkled, lost its ability to retain moisture, and would have been frequently riddled with melanoma. 
However, if the tribes of Europe had been black 15,000 years ago, they would have died out because the density of their melanin content would have prevented their skin cells from manufacturing vitamin D in an environment with so little sunlight. And that vitamin D deficiency would have resulted in a host of problems they wouldn't have been able to afford. Their immune systems would have been compromised in an environment where illness would have come easily. They would have been easily fatigued in the cold, which would already slow their heart rate. Their bones would have grown brittle, they would have lost their hair, and they would have grown crushingly depressed in a time when they would have needed to steal their resolve in order to track woolly mammoths for their fur and their meat across punishing frozen wastelands. This is a stupid reason to hate each other. These differences in skin color exist because it was the only way our kind could have survived in their respective environments before the dawn of civilization. There is no more significant to these traits beyond what we ascribe to them in the context of our culture. Like it or not, globalization happened, and these races must now live together. And if we let this stupid bullshit stunt our growth any further, the survival of our ancestors would have been in vain. So let's retire the term people of color to the annals of history where it belongs. On a final note, I've decided on how I would like to celebrate hitting the 20,000 subscriber mark. I've decided that I'm going to host a live stream with the friend I mentioned in my first and second videos, which are linked in the description for those who need a reminder. I'm fairly certain he will agree, but I'll still need to work it around his schedule. Please keep an eye on my social media feeds for confirmation of the date and time. Thank you for all your support, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you saw here, have a look at my other videos and leave me your thoughts in the comments. If you support my message, then please like, favorite, and subscribe. If you'd like to help this channel improve, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on Facebook with any suggestions. And if you'd like to support me more directly, please consider following me on Patreon. Links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all in my next video.